Welcome to Auto Mundial, the weekly car news and review show. This time we're checking out the long-awaited new Volkswagen Amarok. It's been developed with help from Ford, but can it take on the mighty Toyota Hilux? We also have the new Nissan Juke Hybrid and Jeep's all-new Grand Cherokee set to take on Land Rover. Plus the new Toyota GR86, the best sports car you'll probably never own. That's all coming up, but first, the news. Renault is celebrating 50 years of one of its most iconic cars. The Renault 5's half-century has been marked with a unique electric recreation. The breathtaking one-off has been made with the help of French designer Pierre Gonelon, who has transformed the humble city car into a true piece of rolling artwork. It's called the Renault 5 Diamant, and apart from its silhouette, it shares very little with the 1972 original. It has gem-like headlights sitting proud of the bodywork, rose gold trim and bespoke black and white hubcaps. Inside is just as wild, with a horsehair dashboard, a nifty smartphone holder and yes, that really is a pretzel-shaped steering wheel made from marble. Believe it or not, it's been 12 years since we first saw the Nissan Duke at the Geneva Motor Show, and it caused quite a stir with styling unlike anything else we'd ever seen. One of the very first crossovers that helped to popularise the genre, it seemed like the old Duke would never go away. Thankfully though, in 2020, Nissan finally revealed a new version. A clear evolution of the old model, the new Duke continues the love-it-or-hate-it styling with a strange front end and a chunkier rear end. It certainly looks more modern, although we're still not quite sold on the weird headlight arrangement. It seems like we're in the minority though, as the previous Duke was a huge sales success for Nissan despite its even more peculiar face. But despite its initial popularity, the market for crossover SUVs has grown exponentially since the launch of the original more than a decade ago. Perhaps that's why Nissan took its time with this one, to make sure it can compete with the flurry of new competition. In profile, the new Duke actually looks pretty good, with bold exaggerated wheel arches and tapering roofline giving it a sporty look. It's wider and longer than the old car, with 105mm being added to the wheelbase. Despite that though, the new model is 35 kilos lighter thanks to its Renault Captive platform and high-tension steel construction. Built at the firm's Sunderland factory in the north of England, the only engine offered from launch was a 1.0-litre turbocharged three-cylinder petrol from the Micra, with either a six-speed manual gearbox or an all-new seven-speed dual-clutch automatic, replacing the old CVT transmission. Now though, after a two-year wait, Nissan has finally announced a hybrid Duke. Priced from just over £27,000, the hybrid system commands a £1,700 premium over equivalent non-hybridised versions, but it is worth considering. For one thing, it stands out. Hybrids get a new grille design to optimise aero efficiency, and of course, there's the collection of hybrid badges dotted around the bodywork. Apart from a few new colour options and a new rear spoiler, the rest of the range remains unchanged and ready to sell like hotcakes. The cabin is still funky as ever and quite sporty with flashes of red and gloss black trim. It's bang up to date and features a bright 8-inch touchscreen infotainment system. Sadly though, once out on the road, the Duke's little engine doesn't feel quite up to the job, while the ride leaves plenty to be desired. 
As ever, we'd recommend saving some cash and getting a regular hatchback instead. But if you do have your heart set on a crossover, make sure you shop around. The Duke's quirky image may appeal to some, but there are plenty of other options out there, be they petrol powered, hybrid or even electric. The old Volkswagen Amarok was something of a turning point for Euro market pickup trucks. Where popular models from the likes of Nissan and Mitsubishi were sometimes marketed as lifestyle products, they were primarily designed as big workhorses for towing and picking up stuff from the timber merchants. The Amarok, though, was an altogether more premium option, with an interior more like a saloon car than a van. And it caught on. Soon the Japanese manufacturers were sprucing up their offerings with leather and sat-navs, while even Mercedes joined the bandwagon with its ornate X-Class. Now though, after a two-year hiatus, the Amarok is back to reclaim its place as the poshest pickup. This time, VW hasn't gone to the effort of developing it on its own, instead it enlisted Ford for some help. The new Amarok then is mechanically quite similar to the new Ranger. As a result, the new Amarok is available with a vast selection of powertrains, ranging from 2-litre turbo diesels to a turbocharged Focus RS engine pumping out 300 horsepower. VW hasn't yet confirmed exactly which engines will be coming to the UK, but expect plenty of diesel options with manuals and autos. Crucially, the Amarok can now tow up to 3.5 tonnes, the maximum allowed for this type of vehicle. That puts it in line with even the most industrial rivals from Isuzu and Toyota, meaning this fancy new German truck can still compete with less well-appointed alternatives. It can fit a pallet in the back too, or two pallets if you opt for the upcoming single cab version with a maximum payload of around 1.2 tonnes. On the styling front, the new Amarok is a clear evolution of the old truck, but it looks thoroughly modern. And while the UK has never had the same affinity for pickups as North America, VW hopes the rugged overland styling will appeal to family buyers as well as tradesmen. Trucks tend to lead pretty hard lives, often venturing off-road. To ensure the Amarok is as capable as it looks, all models get four-wheel drive with an 80cm wading depth, only 10cm off a Land Rover Defender. It's on the inside though where the Amarok really stands out. Step inside and you're immediately greeted by a massive portrait infotainment system. As standard, it's 10 inches, but top spec trucks like this get a 12 inch screen. And we're delighted to report that unlike many new cars in VW's range, there are physical buttons for the controls rather than sub-menus in the touchscreen. They're chunky and well spaced, perfect for when you're wearing gloves. It's a very impressive pickup then, but how does it compare against this, the legendary Toyota Hilux? Once described by another motoring show as indestructible, the Hilux has a reputation as the go-to truck in this class for those who want dependability above all else. To that end, the Hilux is not quite as luxurious as the new Volkswagen, but it is still available with all the mod cons that one expects from a car in 2022. There's an infotainment screen, air con and various electronic driver aids to stop you from bumping into things. Introduced last year, the new Hilux is said to be the toughest iteration yet. Toyota says the new ladder frame chassis is 20% stronger than the old models, while the two engine options, a 2.4 diesel and a 2.8, have been tried and tested for years.
Naturally, it gets four-wheel drive with a low-range box and a locking rear diff to help you out when the going gets tough. Its towing capacity is on par with the Amarok, as is the payload for the bed. The Toyota then looks set to remain as popular as ever. More than 18 million have been sold since 1968, but if you're after something with a bit of a softer side, the new Volkswagen Amarok looks like a great choice. You will have to wait a while though, as it isn't going on sale until next year. After the break, a new discovery rival from Jeep and the Toyota GR86. Coming up, Toyota's sold out sports car. But first. Jeep's Grand Cherokee has always offered a very American take on a luxury SUV. With big engines, a roomy cabin, and models to suit a variety of budgets, the fourth gen car has been on sale for an impressive 10 years now, with yearly updates and an underlying feeling of capability, keeping it competitive against a flurry of new rivals. Now though, it is finally being replaced, and this is the new one. Available either as a standard wheelbase five-seater or a long wheelbase seven-seater, we're delighted to report that this is the best-looking version since the 1992 original. It's squarer, chunkier, and bold without looking too in your face. It has the signature Jeep grille with just the right amount of chrome trim. The bonnet is longer and the roof is lower, with slim LED headlights completing the premium new look. Under the skin is all new too, with a heavily revised chassis tuned for improved refinement. The body is much stiffer and there's some multi-link rear suspension, which Jeep reckons has improved both ride comfort and handling. In the UK, it's available only as a plug-in hybrid, but on its home turf of America, there are two engines to choose from. The familiar 3.6-litre V6 from the old car and a 5.7-litre Hemi V8. The smaller engine kicks out 286 bhp through an 8-speed automatic transmission, while the V8 produces 352 bhp. And if you're concerned that the big Hemi might be a little thirsty, you can take some comfort in the new cylinder deactivation system, which shuts down four cylinders when cruising to improve fuel economy by around 20%. Both versions also feature a new system that disconnects the front axles under light load to further boost your NPG. A plug-in hybrid is also on the way later this year. This being a Jeep though, style, comfort and economy must surely take a back seat behind off-road ability. As a result, Grand Cherokee buyers now have a choice of three different four-wheel drive systems. One with a single-speed transfer case, one with a two-speed case and one with a two-speed case and a limited slip rear differential. All versions get torque vectoring and air suspension, which can raise the car by up to 40 millimeters to ensure the Grand Cherokee keeps going no matter the conditions. Naturally, there's a selection of off-road driving modes ranging from rock crawl to hill descent, and it can be specced with chunky tires and heavy duty skid plates if you're really serious about hitting the trails. However, Jeep isn't the only 4x4 stalwart with a posh 7-seater. Enter the Land Rover Discovery, the ultimate blend of practicality and off-road prowess. Sure, it would be hard to argue that it's as good-looking as the Jeep, but it still has plenty going for it. 
fresh from a recent facelift, the Discovery 5 is still one of our favourite posh SUVs. Under the bonnet, the Discovery gets a new host of engines with an array of JLR's latest four and six cylinders. The petrol range kicks off with the 2.0-litre P300, producing 296 brake horsepower, while a bigger 3.0-litre motor rounds off the petrol options with 355 bhp thanks to an electric supercharger and mild hybrid system. There are some diesels to choose from too with massive towing capacities and plenty of low down grunt. And this being a Land Rover, it has all the off-roading technology you could imagine, as well as impressive approach and departure angles and adjustable air suspension like you get in the Jeep. Inside it isn't quite as fancy as a Range Rover, but it is incredibly versatile with space for seven and clever electric folding seats. The Land Rover is expensive though and it doesn't have a big capacity engine to compete with the Jeep's V8. When the Toyota GT86 launched a decade ago, it instantly became a cult icon. Here was a front-engined rear-wheel drive coupe with an emphasis on fun and a bargain basement price tag. It even came with deliberately skinny tyres to help it do big skids. It wasn't without its faults though. Its 2.0-litre boxer engine from Subaru always felt like it could do with more grunt, meaning it was often improved in the aftermarket. Now, finally, there's a new one. The name has changed to GR86 in keeping with Toyota's other performance models under the Kazoo racing umbrella, but that's far from the biggest difference from the old car. The old 2.0-litre motor has been ditched in favour of a Meteor 2.4. It's still a boxer and still naturally aspirated, but power is now up by 35 horsepower to a much healthier 232. 0 to 62 miles per hour has dropped to 6.3 seconds, meaning it's still some way behind a Lotus or a Porsche. But this is a lot cheaper if you're lucky enough to get your hands on one. The GR86 costs just under £30,000. However, the production run for Europe is lasting just two years and the UK allocation sold out in just 90 minutes. That should result in some pretty hefty markups in the classifieds. If you have been lucky enough to get an allocation though, what can you expect? Well, along with the extra power and performance, the GR86 gets a new look. It looks infinitely more modern than the old car despite sharing the same basic body shell. It has been stiffened though, all in the name of handling. It was in the corners that the old car really shone. The back end was always eager to step out, but it was easily manageable and an absolute blast on track. On the road too, it was precise, responsive and always totally engaging. For this new one then, Toyota has been careful not to mess with the recipe too much. Along with a stiffer chassis, torsional rigidity is up by 50%, the GR86 comes with some grippier Michelin Pilot Sport 4 tyres on 18-inch alloys from the GR Yaris. The suspension has been revised and the centre of gravity has been lowered. All this, along with the 86's sub-1300 kilo curb weight, means it should please any small sports car fan. The good news continues inside where we find three pedals and a proper gear stick. Buyers can opt for an automatic if they wish, but we imagine the vast majority will stick with the manual. The rest of the cabin seems to be a case of if it ain't broken, don't fix it. The dashboard has been redesigned to accommodate the big infotainment screen, but the layout will be familiar to those upgrading from the old model. In other parts of the world, the GR86 will also be badged as the Subaru BRZ. Over here though, the Toyota has only one direct rival, the world's best-selling sports car, the MX-5. 
The MX-5 is a true motoring icon, and despite having been in production since the late 80s, it's currently just its fourth generation. Base models get a zesty little 1.5, but the bigger 2.0-litre is closest in performance to the 86. It may be down on power with just 182 bhp, but it will still hit 62 from rest in 6.5 seconds thanks to its light weight. It also has the added benefit of a convertible roof, although a Targa-style RF model is available if wind in your hair isn't such a priority. It isn't quite as practical as the GR, but is just as much fun to drive. It won't be quite as quick around a track, but its sub-25 grand price tag leaves plenty of extra cash to spend on track days. The Toyota GR86, though, is what we've been waiting for for years. It feels like some of the old car's potential has finally been unlocked thanks to the extra power. It's just a shame it took them so long. Join us again next week on Auto Mundial as we check out a new performance SUV from Cadillac, the Escalade V.